Okay, please forgive me, I'm not used to using a microphone. Generally, uh, I shout and scream at people. Um, my name is Chris Chudley, and I'm here uh, as the Programme Director for the Jared Shoemaker Academy of Rugby. And we are set up to engage with at-risk youth. Um, the Academy is named after Jared Shoemaker, a US Marine, a uh, former Tulsa police officer, and he played rugby for Tulsa Rugby Club. Um, and I believe that Jared is actually the embodiment of the characteristics that we seek to promote in the young people we work with. Sadly, in 2006, he lost his life on active duty in Fallujah in Iraq. Um, and you will see his name all over Tulsa, on bridges, in the airport. Um, and now we're keeping it alive as a, a living memorial to, to what he stood for. I would like you to picture the scene. Last year I was in England, in the summer, it was raining as usual. I was on a rugby pitch, surrounded by 50 feet fences, raised wire on top, uh, in a prison, allegedly the toughest, most violent prison in the United Kingdom, waiting for 25 young men to come along to be engaged in a rugby programme. They didn't particularly want to be engaged in the rugby programme, they were told they had to be there, and I heard voices, I heard the noise as they were walking down, and I looked over, and there were about 25 people shuffling along, hands down the front of their trousers, trying desperately hard not to conform, and look me. When they stood in front of me, they still had their hands down the front of their trousers, didn't particularly get eye contact from anybody, um, and I had to start. They were looking suspicious. Does anyone like football? <coughs> And I'm talking about proper football with a round ball, not where you, uh, not where you throw it. There's always one. Does anyone like Manchester United? Yes. There's always one. Yeah, I hate Manchester United. <laughs> a bit of passion. You sir, step forward. And I got this, this lad to come, come forward. I hand him a contact shield, show him how to hold it, and he held it as, as he takes it to his chest. Then I grab his shoulders sharply and I bring my knee into the pad as hard as I can, 10, 15 times. On occasions, his feet leave the ground. No way! You can't do no man! Oh, they, there's chaos. There's carnage. But they step back. I then take the shield off the lad, put it across my chest, and look at him and say, you now have 30 seconds payback, resolution. <coughs> Stand by. Go! I had to take the mic away. And he starts. After about five seconds, the power falls off. The physical fitness and capability of, of the lad sort of limits what he can do. I thank him for his efforts and I send him back to the group. At that point, I have done what I set out to do in my initial engagement. I have the 25 people in the palm of my hand for three reasons. One, they think I'm crazy. <laughs> so they're interested and intrigued as to what I'm going to do next. Two, they think I'm crazy, so they're wary of what I'm going to do, which is a very, very good situation to be in when you're dealing with the toughest, most aggressive young people. And finally, they want to do what I've just done. So they want to get involved. And at that point, I can start with the rugby, and I can start with the, uh, with the actual delivery of the programme. Why rugby? Well, in the UK and in America, it's a very, very small population. There is an image associated with rugby. Everybody thinks that rugby players are 10 foot barbarians with muscles on muscles that can feel no pain. I know the truth. Devin knows the truth and it's not, it's, not, it's not the way. But what that does with these people is that it develops their self-esteem. When from making the first tackle to playing a game, their self-esteem grows. Their peers look at them as rugby players and they look at them slightly differently and they see, they have a little bit more respect. By putting these people in a better place and feeling better about themselves, then we can actually work with them and we can change them. Because when you're feeling good about yourself, better things happen. We can get them into rugby clubs. We change their social circle. Okay? And by changing their so so social circle, they get new friends. The values of rugby are very, very similar to the values of the military. I spent 18 years in the British infantry. 
Um, and the trust, the camaraderie, uh, the respect, uh, it's, it, it, it's very, very similar. Loyalty is massively, massively important because you're in a physically intimidating environment, um, pretty much as if you're in, in the army and deployed. So, it leads me to the groups that we're working with. And in Tulsa, we're working with two groups. One is US veterans in need of a little bit of help to get back, get their lives back on track. And the second group is at risk youth, the most difficult to engage. And the plan is to use the veterans to work with the youth and mentor the youth. The program gives me the opportunity and the right to be heard. Uh, I'm in a very strong position because they're trying to learn a skill that I mastered 30 years ago. Um, so the respect is, is an easy thing to develop. Um, I can be a role model for the young people. The veterans can be a role model for the young people. I can get the veterans back in touch with the man that they used to be when they were serving, before they served. And with the young people, what we can do is we can introduce them to the man that they want to be. Um, we can't play rugby all the time. And in between the sessions, then we sit down and we talk. And we talk about image, we talk about fear, we talk about perceptions, we talk about dealing with authority. Um, and the, the differences between your generation and my generation, who's going to be asking you for a job? Are they going to be impressed if you walk in and your trousers are halfway around your ankles, you know, and you've got your swagger when you're talking in you know, street speak? Will they understand you? you know, and that's the sort of thing that we talk about. My first recruiting session was at the Veterans Treatment Court on Monday, and we've got 11 people signed up. Tomorrow, I go into McLean High School for my first school session. Okay. Um, and I believe that in McLean High School that we'll get a very, very strong take-up. Um, and then, having worked for eight weeks with both groups, we'll bring them together. That's the day-to-day the -day actions of the Academy. My first real role here is to develop profile. <coughs> and we intend to do that with a 100-mile ruck around the streets of Tulsa. As I said, my background in military, I'm quite happy with the pack on my back. So we're going to go for 100 miles in 36 hours along all the main streets of Tulsa. And we want to make a bit of noise and a bit of, look at these guys, what are they doing? <coughs> um, and let everybody know what we're about. And the point of doing something that challenging is that I want to, start to show that I'm not scared of taking on a challenge I've never done before. And with a little bit of determination and drive, you can achieve anything. And that's the message you want to get across to both groups that we're working with. <coughs> My role then with the Academy is to source sponsors, to source advertisers, to find individual sub subscribers, to develop the business model so that we can sustain without actually seeking donations constantly, uh, to find employment partners, people that want to take on the veterans that we work with, want to give jobs and apprenticeships to the young people that we work with, and to find opportunities to grow it beyond also into Oklahoma and wider, and maybe even across the USA. What I'm looking for is people that wish to associate with the values that we are pushing and growing within the Jared Shoemaker Academy of Rugby. If anybody has any questions, I'm all yours. I'm all yours. <laughs> what do you feel is your biggest challenge to making this program a success? Uh, sadly, it's money. Okay. It's money. Um, it's, it's being able to fund the academy. Uh, our running costs are $50,000 a year. Um, and I currently live in Spain. So oh, wow. It's money. <laughs> yeah. okay. So if you currently live in Spain, um, how are you here uh, on a temporary basis? Do you have someone else that's representing you here? How does that work? Uh, I've been coming back and forward now for the last year. Okay. Um, hopefully this is my last trip on my own. Um, when I go back, I'm here for two months really to get the money into the kitty. Um, and when I go back, I collect my family, and we come back and we settle in Tulsa. I've got a three-year work visa. Um, and we'll be here for three years to get the, get the program established and, and good. So say if you get the money that you need to get this program established, what kind of funds are we talking about, number one? And two, I mean, you mentioned 50,000, but I'm sure it's more than that. Um, and two, where would you like to see this program in a year? 
Um, firstly, the, the running costs of the academy um, are, are around about 50,000 a year. Um, they're, they're, they're no more than that. Um, rugby doesn't require a lot of equipment. Um, it's a vehicle which we've got sourced. Um, it's wages and it's contact shields. Okay, so that, that's where we're, we're at with that. Um, in a year's time, I want the program to be rock solid in Tulsa. Uh, we have interest from USA Rugby um, to help promote it wider across the USA because the program was very successful in the UK for 10 years. It was the subject of a TV show um, and the people from USA Rugby have seen it and understand what it's about. Um, so there is an opportunity for them to grow rugby across the USA without actually promoting the sport and promoting the social impact that it has. Um, but in a year's time, I want us to be operating out of five or six new schools with maybe five or six other groups outside of high schools, um, with veterans mentoring different groups, and with a group of rugby coaches that know what they're talking about, have no fear going into an environment that is intimidating um, to engage with the young people. Chris, when you mentioned that you don't want to be out there begging for money all the time, you mentioned job opportunities. Can you explain a little bit more about that? What, we, what we're hoping to do is we are going to have a pool of motivated labour, um, be they veterans or young people leaving school. And what we want to do is create a business whereby that motivated labour can learn to run a business, be it sweeping up leaves, uh, carpet cleaning, walking dogs, whatever it may be. So these guys then grow their business, uh, learn the skills to run a business, um, and generate income to support their own wages, generate income to support the academy. So the academy isn't just a not-for-profit, not for we're doing great things, please, please fund us, but we actually uh, have a for-profit element that will go to keeping these guys in work. How did you choose McLean High School out of all of the high schools in Tulsa? Um, they're the first school that came back to us and said, come in, to be honest. Um, we, we approached Tulsa Public Schools um, uh, as, as a whole, and they turned around and said, yeah, really supportive, but there are so many legal loopholes to jump through that we're not going to be ready. Um, and a teacher from McLean came to me and said, I've got 30 kids that want to get involved in rugby. So that's why we, we went to McLean. Um, I've been told that McLean is in a tough part of town and the kids are in need of help. Um, and it was on our list of one of the places that we wanted to go to anyway. Could you just talk a little bit about uh, rugby and Tulsa? There's, is there a history of of, of the sport in Tulsa? Yeah, the, uh, believe it or not, uh, the, oldest, the oldest sports club in Tulsa with an unbroken history is the rugby club. Uh, it was established in 1974 and has been running ever since. Um, and I first came to Tulsa over 20 years ago um, and played rugby against the Tulsa Rugby Club, uh, which is how I came to know about rugby in the, in the, in the city. Um, the club has grown from you know, the, the beginnings of, of many rugby clubs with the uh, uh, rebels that, that struggle to find a home and, and find a sport to, to settle into, um, to a point where they want to put back into, into society and they want to actually make an impact within the, the society that they've been living in for 40 years. Um, it's not you know, entirely selfless, there is self-interest in there because the more that they give back into the community, then the more they know the more likely is that the, the rubber will be sustained for years to come. Chris, do you have a date for your walk? Yes, it's the 3rd and 4th of March. We're going to start at 6 o'clock in the morning um, and you will see us on the streets, no, hopefully not slowing the traffic down too much, until the evening of the 4th on Friday. So is your start and end um, location the same? No, we're, we think that the, the plan is that we're going to start at McNally South. Uh, for those of you who are aware, uh, McNally's got a long association with, um, with the rugby club. So we'll start there um, and we'll probably finish in the downtown area. We're trying to sort out an event so that actually there, there's another reason for the people to be down there. 
Yes. Uh, you know, we'll go and finish. Yeah. Okay, because I'm very interested in helping you support that, your walk. Wonderful. And I wanted to tell you that, you know, I was personally sorry that rugby did your organization didn't get the cut with the 2025 vision. But Thank you. Very interested in what you're doing. Okay. Hi, Chris. Hello. I'm Cal Morris with SCORE. We help small businesses uh, get started. We also help uh, existing businesses grow to the next level. And we have in Tulsa 30 guys over here that uh, volunteer their services, both working and non working, counselors. Uh, it's a free service. We also have to fundraise ourselves. We get SBA funding, we're a resource partner there for about half our. <coughs> income but we have an office suite we have to produce about uh, just have 15,000 just to cover the office expenses we go to sponsors in the area here and we have a model that I'd be glad to share with you here's the booklet uh, we get about 30 sponsors and the concept of the model is to take some of the successes that you have on one side of the packet and make a presentation uh, as you've got here on the values of your program, what successes you've had with it. There are a couple of little unique trends to it where uh, tricks that we can talk about. Uh, sometimes it's easier, rather than just getting a straight donation from a sponsor, to sell them something through their marketing budget. A little easier to get into the ad. We have little <coughs> ads that we put in there and we staple them into a booklet. But I'd be glad to share that uh, concept with you. We raise about 30000 a year off of this, so it's kind of in the road of where you're going. Yeah. Uh, Going forward, that would be great. Thank you very much. I'll give you my car later. Yes. Uh, you mentioned ways of finding uh, finding ways of employing veterans um, and and them having entrepreneurial starts, those kind of things. Have you thought much about um, creating uh, environments that allow them to be teachers in the schools and let the schools themselves actually like if they're looking to make an impact on people, if they've got a certain set of skills, helping the school actually uh, pay for the teacher, you're still be a club. You're different, and so it's, there's a there's a demarcation there between the school and the rugby club. But it seems like if you can let the school finance some of what you're doing, it would be I mean, it'd be intriguing. I've got about, I haven't thought it out, but I think it's a fantastic idea. Um, because the, the veterans that we do engage with, joining the rugby club is, is neither here nor there. If they want to do it, then great, then that, that's, that's fantastic. Um, but the, the rugby is just a vehicle to help them develop and take the next step. Uh, and I think a lot of them will be fantastic in schools as mentors, definitely. So if, you can, if, you're, if you're able to help them get accreditation, walk through yeah. what those processes are, you really, plus you have one more, person who's wanting to make a difference in yeah. the local school. That is the, 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 the one thing. These guys all signed up to serve. They used to serving. They want to help people. Um, and when I was speaking to in, in the treatment court, um, the overwhelming answer was, well, I get to help people. Oh, that's, I want to put back. I want to put back. Yeah, definitely. They're, they're the right sort of people to do it. Chris, could you tell me a little bit about uh, when you get the youth involved in the game? Are they going to be playing at a high school level, at a club level? Are they going to be their own team? Are they going to play other teams that are just Jared Shoemaker teams? How is that going to work? Is it just training, or is it, are they really going to be part of that? The, the whole point is, with beginners, is the, the achievement. Um, and if you've never played rugby before, to go from not playing to playing a, a full contact match is a massive hurdle to overcome. And overcoming that hurdle is when you get them into the good place, you know, and that's when you can really work with them. So they will all play a game of rugby. Um, the minimum is that they'll play one game. We aim in McLean to establish a team. Um, if we can't get the, all the guys, um, you know, enough guys from McLean, then we'll, we'll pick up from other schools. There was an organisation called Rugby Oklahoma that overseas high school rugby. Um, there are five high school teams in Tulsa currently, uh, a couple in Oklahoma City, um, and they all play against each other. Um, so what we want to do is develop a team that, that feeds into rugby Oklahoma, that plays 
on a regular basis. Again, that's not the point of the program, but it's a very, very welcome byproduct that we, we get more people playing rugby and we we can grow the, the ethos of the sport by having more established teams in more venues. Um, I also intend to establish, if we, if we can't actually base them out of high schools, you know, we'll, we'll pull together people from different cohorts and we'll base them out of you know, a, a location. Um, one location that we're considering at the moment is Ghost Church. Um, we'll develop a partnership with Ghost Church whereby uh, these guys can go along there um, and get involved with the, the youth congregation there, we'll put the team out of there. Um, and again, we're changing their social circle. That's what we're looking for. <clears throat> on the big walk you're planning on doing, uh, how is your sponsorship lining up right now? Does it look like it's going to create enough uh, revenue into the program, or do you need more sponsors? Um, I'm going to post someone if you want to give me money. Then I'll take it. I'll take it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we can never. We can never get enough money. Um, I have a, a personal target involved um, in terms of I, what I believe it is worth doing or worth doing for. Um, 100 miles with, with weight in boots on tarmac, uh, I can pretty much guarantee that I'll lose all my toenails, um, as will the, uh, the two or three guys that are doing the 400 miles with me. Uh, we have individual, the individuals are, are sourcing sponsorship. Uh, we have a little bit of commercial sponsorship and um, everybody that I come into contact with through rugby has been asked to go out and raise $100 a minimum, just $10 from 10 friends uh, to support this. The, the, fun, the funding from the work will be split 50-50 down the middle. We will take 50% of it and the other 50% will go to the American Legion, uh, to number one in Tulsa. Um, so there will be a direct benefit straight away immediately to veterans as, as well as actually establishing our, our program. Uh, Chris, I love it. I love the idea of building esteem on both sides of the equations for the veterans and the uh, students. Um, as you've networked back, the oldest organization, sports organization in Tulsa, all the way back to 74, I think you said. Yeah. Have you networked back through to see what resources, that's got to be several thousand people that love rugby. Uh, and probably have had some success in business that might be able to reach back. And that's, to be honest, the, the network that we've been leaning on heavily uh, to start with. The downside of that is that the rugby club has been leaning on them heavily for 40 years. Um, you know, <coughs> as, as, as much as there are people that, that will help us, they're, they're just as tired of uh, dipping in their pockets, which is why we want to develop this model whereby we're, we're earning as well. Um, but they are the people that have got us established. Going now a year, uh, you know, and, and they've got us to this point. Yeah. Have you thought about, Have you thought about uh, talking to a lot of the CrossFit boxes in town who love this kind of team marching pain kind of experiences? You know, maybe they make it a team deal for a hundred marches or whatever, but. They, they pay a lot of money to go and do these kind of things, so it'd be, I'd be intrigued to see if they want to come along with you. And I'll make them try for free. Yeah. Um, we have spoken to some CrossFit groups. Um, it's, it's quite a unique challenge. Um, I, I'm not particularly uh, kidding with, with, with the CrossFit sort of mentality, uh, but equally, the CrossFit mentality is about pain and putting yourself through hell and torment. Um, I would like to see this established in the Tulsa calendar, you know, so that it becomes something that, that happens every year, because I think it is quite a unique challenge. Um, and I think as we develop our presence on the ground, people will say, oh, yeah, I'd, I'd like to do that. When I've spoken to people about getting involved, um, the building immediately using marked stairways and exits. Do not use elevators. There has been an emergency recorded in the building. Okay. Elevators. 